Hello, in this video we're going to write a short little program that actually will calculate the quadratic formula for you. So I kind of have a little bit of a different setup here than what you're used to if you've watched my earlier videos. On the left side here I have my programming window and on the right side here I have one note up so I can kind of doodle in here. Um, and we're going to first jot down what the quadratic formula is and we'll do an example quickly because often when you want to program something you, you doing a concrete example helps you break that down into the steps that are needed to be programmed. So if you remember, a quadratic expression is 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we can, of course, give a concrete example. So 0 is equal to, say, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Um, and a couple ways to solve this. One way, which we often use, is we factor and we say, you know, x plus 2, x plus 3, and therefore we get x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to minus 3. And if you if you don't remember how to do this, I actually do have some videos on my on my site that goes over quadratic um, quadratic factoring. So now. What you eventually learn is that there's this great formula called the quadratic formula. And we know that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so what we can do is if we know the values a, b, and c, so if we come up here, in this case a is equal to 1, b is equal to 5, and c is equal to 6, we can sub these directly in. So let's do that. So 5 negative plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 6 all over 2 times 1. And if I get work this out, we're actually going to have two answers because of this plus or minus here. So x is going to equal to negative 2 or x is going to equal negative 3. And that's a concrete example we do in math class. But what we want to do is to write a program that will do this for us. So over here on the left, what you'll notice is I've done a couple things. I've made a class called Quad Check, and I've mapped out the steps I need to work through. This is something I always encourage students to do, and, and people that are more advanced programmers because by mapping out the steps you need to do and commenting them in it helps you kind of think through the process. So the first thing I need to do here is declare my variables. So if we come back over here and we look at this we want to ask ourselves: if I was to write a program to perform this process what information would the user have to provide? And we see that since the formula requires B, A, B, and C, we need to write a program that first takes inputs for A, B, and C. So, if I come over here, I'm going to make a variable A, B, and C. Now then the question comes, what type do we want to make this variable? Even though in this case, everything looks like nice integers, we do have cases with this where it might be a decimal number. So we're going to make them doubles. So double A, and we'll make that zero. Double B, make that zero double C, make that zero. And now I have my variables that I can take inputs for. Not only do I need to think about variables that I can take inputs for, I have to think about variables to hold the result. So if I look here, I'm actually calculating this value of x right there. But what stands out is that I have two x values. I have x1 and x2. So I'm going to need two separate variables to hold each of those outputs. So we'll call this double x1, double x2, zero. And again, it's good practice to declare your variables at the top of your program. So now we're going to come down here. So the next step is we're going to take inputs. But here's the thing. Taking inputs, we know how to do this. It's not a big deal. And I'm really interested in the mathematics for this program. So what I'm going to do with this program is I'm going to do take the inputs at the very end. And I'm going to come up here, and I'm actually just going to set A, B, and C to what I want it to be. By doing this, we can then run this program through the calculations that are necessary, see that it's working, and then go back and write the short little code segment to take inputs. 
but we're going to do this later. Just put that right there. Okay, so let's process our inputs. So we have to use some mathematical operations here. And we can do this in n a number of lines, or we can do this in one line. I'm going to try and do it in one line. So I'm going to come over here to my rough work, and I'm going to look at, well, what do I need to calculate, and what operations does Java know, and which ones do I have to kind of draw in? So we can multiply by a negative 1. That's fine. The ones that jump out at me here are the square root and the, f the squared. So to do this, I'm going to make an assignment statement. And I'm going to say x1 is equal to. And so now we want negative b, so we can just put negative b just like this. Let's deal with the plus case. So now I need to take the square root of everything inside the square root operation. Right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the built-in math function. So I'm going to say math.sqrt, which is the square root operation. And then I'm going to say b times b minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. So now I've plugged this in. And if we output it, dot print, I should get a value of negative 2 or minus 3. So let's run this and see what happens. I don't. If you look down here, you'll see we get the value of 4.5. So let's talk about why that is. Remember, Java performs mathematical statements and applies the order of operations that are necessary. So what it's actually going to do is it's going to first calculate what's inside the brackets here. Then it will take the square root of that. And then it will divide by 2a. So we have to really watch here because we want to add negative b first. So I'm going to insert a set of parentheses to kind of force that. I'll just scroll over here. There we go. So now when I run it, I want you to ask yourself, is it going to work? Let's see. I get negative 2.0. Now, sometimes here, we want to be careful because we want to, I would even take my denominator and put it in brackets like that just to be sure that everything works. And that clearly separates my numerator and my denominator. So if you have an expression that looks like this, really take advantage of brackets to kind of separate it out. So if you're at this point and you're getting the wrong answer, what you can do is you can break up this, this mathematical process into a couple steps. So now we have x1, so let's calculate x2. So x2 equals, and let's just copy this whole thing, and we're going to paste it again. And instead of adding b, we're going to minus b. And let's make this a little more user-friendly. x1 equals system.out.print x2 equals. And let's run this. Oh, let's make this a print line so it looks nice. So now I run this, and I have my two answers. And now let's test a couple other cases. Let's put, say, 1, um, 4, 9. And let's see if this one works. And I get NAN. Hmm, not a number. So this is where we're going to end this video. And I'm going to leave you with this thought. In Java, NAN means not a number. NAN means not, oh, it's doing all sorts of weird stuff here. So let me get out of that. There we go. Sorry about that. Let me just say it in words. NAN means not a number. And we get NAN when we do one of two things. We either try and take the square root of a negative number, or we try and divide by 0. And that's what's happening here when I put the values for a, b, and c as 1, 4, 9. And if you've done this before in math class, you recognize that this is the case where our discriminant is negative. And in the next video, we're going to add a little bit of code to take, to take care of that, to make a decision to maybe do something different if the discriminant is negative. I hope that helped.